What's going on growers? It's James Piccioni coming to you live from Jersey. As a lot of you probably know, just a few days ago we had a real bad tropical storm here. So today I want to show you what that storm did to the garden and what I'm doing about it now. Let's go! <laughs> Like I mentioned right in the intro, this storm happened a few days ago, and you'll see this bed right here. I still haven't been able to come through and actually clean this whole bed up and get it fixed. The rest of the garden, I've been able to move through and fix a lot of the things, restake some of the tomatoes, which I'm gonna show you. But this storm this year was, it was different than the other years, and a lot worse in my opinion. I think it was so bad because of the timing of it. For instance, a lot of the storms we've had in the past, like Storm Sandy, which happened in 2012, that would rip through here really bad, and I was here for the whole entire thing of it. I would say the wind for this storm were probably even a little worse than that but at this time of the year all the trees still had their leaves and everything the tomatoes were loaded with stuff so all that added weight and added surface area made such a huge difference in it and it really hit the garden hard so here's one of the sections that it hit pretty good the, like that like I mentioned I haven't been able to come through and stake some of this stuff up but we're not worried about what happened in the past all we can do is focus on what we can uh, make out of this in the future so what we're gonna do is just turn this negative into a positive so I want to show you a lot of the sections that I've kind of fixed I have some clips from what it looked like before and what it looks like after so the first one I want to show you is right behind me here these tomatoes just got decimated and it was the weight of the tomatoes because they were just so heavy at this time of the year just full of fruit even one like this and what failed on this was just actually the the bamboo stake the bamboo stake snapped at the bottom so it wasn't the clips or anything that failed it was simply just a stake and the weight of the tomato because it was so high up so this thing snapped all we did was put a new stake in right here and then just tie the tomato to that stake so all these are looking fantastic we didn't have any losses in this section so it's encouraging to be able to go through that storm and still see that the tomatoes they're thriving they're doing well and they're producing it's one of the convenient things about growing the tomatoes like this because they're pretty hardy because they're vines they can be thrown on the ground a little and be raised back up so just because your tomatoes are laying down don't give up on them now i want to show you a section that actually took a beating from the storm and it's actually the trellis that i just built this year the thing that actually makes me really happy is the trellis worked out fantastically it's not the trellis at all that failed the only issue was when the wind got so strong and the tomatoes had so many tomatoes on them i just didn't use a string that was strong enough so the string snapped in a lot of the spots which was a little bit unfortunate but it's not too big of a deal when the tomatoes uh, fell on the ground from the string snapping all i did was i had someone come along with me and we just picked the tomatoes back up held them straight up, and then we just transferred the clips from one tomato to the other one. It made it quick, it made it easy, and you can see a lot of the tomatoes are still doing real well. One thing you'll notice too, is like right here, this tomato plant, I didn't t put the uh, ties close enough to the top here, so we had a really large gap, you'll see about two feet, and as a result of that, it just got too strong from the wind and snapped it right there. So that's my own fault, I need to make sure that I'm continuing to put the clips as the tomato goes up. If you have that same issue where some of your tomatoes are folded like at the top here with my tomato, all I'm going to do is just bring this up here and just put a new clip right there, that's fine. If you've noticed like my tomatoes are, they're so tall that they're at the top, you can do one of two things. You can either prune the top of that, of that all the way at the top, the tomato, so basically that sucker, that'll encourage more lateral growth and more fruiting around the base where you can reach, or you can drop your tomato down. They call it lowering it and leaning it, and then allow your tomato to kind of lean down, bending at the bottom, and allowing just all the fruit to sit at a nicer height for you. That'll allow it to continue to trellis long. But what I'm gonna do is probably just prune the top of my tomato, get more of those suckers. Some of the tomatoes I lost overall, which is, I mean, that's gonna happen, but that's okay. This right here was one of the Jersey Devils, so it's probably only, only right that the Jersey Devil gets gets crushed in the in the storm from hell i guess we'll kind of call it it was a crazy storm we still have a lot of ripe tomatoes right here but there's a few other issues that happened from the storm a lot of my things blew over so we had to stake them like these peppers right here i typically don't stake these peppers unless i have to but i had to go around and stake all of them so what i did was just get this cheap piece of wood right here eight foot long i think it was two dollars just cut it into three or four pieces, knock them into the ground, and stake them with these plastic clips right here. Makes it really easy, and it works well. Another issue that I found from this, especially with my fruit trees, it happened with my annuals as well, is the wind caused them to whip around so much, so the base of the trees formed really big gaps around them. I'll show you. As I move over to this fruit tree, you'll notice around the base of it, because the wind was just so strong and it whipped it around so much, it caused these uh, the gaps around, around it, you'll notice, see? 
like this, even on this backside especially, there's a huge gap on that. So what I'm gonna have to do is stake this tree up to get it upright where it belongs. Then I'm gonna take some soil, this is the soil that I make, and just backfill it. If you wanna know how I make this soil, just check out one of the, the container garden video. I show exactly how I did that. So you'll notice I'm doing this for the fruit trees, making sure we've got some good soil back around the base. Then I'm gonna stake it and tie it up. But this same scenario happened with the annuals, like I'll show you right next to me. This pepper right here. So on a smaller scale, that same thing happened where these plants got whipped around and the base of them kind of, you know, got damaged in some gaps. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna go around with some soil, just top dress it some good soil. It'll act as fertilizer. It'll help those roots and everything. Then we'll go back and put some mulch around it. So we're making sure we're gonna go around all the annuals and put this top dressing. This way it's gonna really help the plants bounce back after we have them staked. Some of you may remember earlier in the spring, in this section we had a lot of brassicas growing and then one day the groundhog came and he ate a good amount of them. And that was demoralizing. It really stinks when you put the time, the effort in, all the work, and then something comes and just takes it away when it feels like you did nothing wrong. That was the same kind of scenario with the storm where you put in everything, it looks really well, it's growing well, you're sitting waiting for the harvest and then the next day, huge crop loss because storm and again you feel like you did nothing wrong i know that feeling it can be super demoralizing but me and tuck are here to tell you to stay encouraged to stick with it because every failure brings with it the seed of an equivalent success try to focus on that and try to make sure that you're learning from it so when a storm like this happens or any scenario me and tuck like to say we're we're getting this experience and putting it in our information and bank and our tools of knowledge to be able to go into future situations and make sure we can avoid these or uh, you know, have the least crop loss as possible. Like if I could have went back, I should have harvested a lot of my tomatoes. I should have a stronger string. So little simple things like that next year, I'm gonna be able to avoid these problems. It might've been like a, you know, one in 10 year storm or, you know, every 10 years that only happens to storm, but I'm gonna be prepared for it the next time. I hope you guys are too. So this section right here, you'll notice we've got all cabbages and stuff planted, new brassicas, another set. Behind that, we've got cucumbers planted, another set. I'm 71 days away from my first expected frost date, which means for me, the second half of the garden year, we're just getting started. That storm told me it's time to get at it, to keep planting, to take advantage of the time we have because it's dwindling. There's not that much time left. 70 days, we can still plant cucumbers. They are about 50 to 70 days. I planted some new zucchini, I gotta show you. It only takes 48 days. Take advantage of that time. One thing that I noticed also, which was kind of weird, was when I look at the grapes and my persimmons and some of my other fruit, I'll notice that like that that coating, that film that is on the outside of a lot of the fruits seems to be like blowing off or something. You can see the shine on it. So on the underside and the other fruit, you can see that white film on it. And I believe that's like a bacterial film that helps keep away some of the pests and disease. So I don't think that's a great thing that that got washed off, but there's nothing I can really do about it. Some of the other plants seem like they have that film on it, the grapes. Overall, this grape is doing real well. I can tell it's getting close to ripening though because they're getting softer, the grapes, and they're starting to get that nice color to them. So we've got a lot of grapes that are still just close to being ripe. And in the section behind me too, I've got a bunch of different zucchinis and stuff planted. Like I mentioned, some of those green machine ones that only take 48 days. Tuck, no digging, boy. It looks like Tuck dug a hole back there again. Tuck, you crazy, boy. So green machine zucchinis. We've got some different varieties, cucumbers in the back. Over here I have some beets planted and a bunch of different brassicas, but I wanna bring you to another section of the garden and show you how some of the stuff fared out. The sunflowers, <laughs> let's just say those didn't fare out too great. And I'll bring you into the old food forest too, show you how some of that stuff is doing and show you one of the issues I'm having with the hazelnuts. The storm, it was really bad, but it definitely could have been worse. I just, after the whole thing, feel really thankful that we didn't lose everything. And it makes me appreciate just getting all the fruit. It makes it even more valuable and even better because it makes it almost feel like I earned it more, even or I'm luckier, even though I'm not for some reason. So we still got some nice soldakis. You know, this is one of my favorite varieties. These things are just monsters. And we've got another one here that's gonna be ripening, getting close. I've got some big tomatoes over here. This thing's getting real close too. Look at this baby. Maybe we'll just take it today, let it ripen a little inside. I've got another one like this that's a monster too. Look at that. I think that's just so cool, so unique. And this zucchini right here, this guy has been a monster producer for us. So we'll take these two little ones here. This guy, about the perfect size. And this guy over here. These things took a beating from the storm too, but these zucchinis have just been such monster producers. And I've talked about it before, but when it comes to the 
overall production, I think, of this zucchini, a lot of it comes back to the fact of good variety selection. I think I've almost mentioned the name of this variety zucchini in like almost every video I did because I want a lot of you growing it if you're having issues with zucchinis. This one's an easy one to grow with huge, delicious zucchinis. Let me bring you to a section right over here now where I've got another round of zucchinis planted that are, I guess, planted about three weeks ago. So I'll make sure that I'm continually getting these harvests up until the fall, up until the frost comes. These ones have done well. They're producing some flowers, some young zucchini, and uh, nothing fully pollinated yet, but they're doing real well. And then this section along here, this stuff is starting to slow down a little bit, I'm noticing, especially along the fence line. So I've got a next round of zucchini and cucumbers and stuff that I'll be planting right in there to replace all of it. And I mentioned the, uh, the sunflowers took they take a beating. Let me show you this one over here. I've had sunflowers, the tallest I've ever had them this year. They were like 10 or 12 feet tall, but you know, big trees fall hard or big sunflowers. This thing just snapped like a twig, like it was nothing. And these sunflowers are actually strong because they're not super hollow plants, but still just snapped right in half. My, some of my other sunflowers got ripped out of the ground. I have to say, I was surprised for how bad the storm was, how little damage there actually is in the garden. I did lose some tomatoes though, which is a little bit unfortunate, but that's gonna happen. Right here, we've got this monster tomato too. This one's doing real well. Let me just cut this out, because we gotta harvest it. One of the better tomatoes of the year probably so far. Beautiful. So if you have a section where some of your tomatoes died, like I had one die me here, what we're gonna do is look for a tomato that has a really long sucker on it. Then we're gonna cut that sucker out and push that into the ground and try to root it. So right next to me here, we've got a a cherry tomato that's doing really well. Thing's a beast. This is a sucker growing off of it. You notice growing from the crotch of the stem. So what I'm gonna do is just cut this out. Then this right here is essentially another tomato plant. It's got the top on it. You'll notice right here is the top. So what I'm gonna do is just cut it about here, cut all those side branches off, and then we're gonna push this into the ground deep as deep as we can get it because anywhere that the soil comes in contact with the root i mean with the stem it should root tomatoes have these really fine little hairs on them those will all turn into roots if you can bury it deep enough and it's got an adequate level of moisture so we'll bury that super deep into the ground push it and then water it in and then in a few days this will start uh rooting this way we can replace the tomato that we had i believe there's still enough time to be able to get some of those tomatoes because my first expected frost date is up to October 16th. That doesn't mean the frost is coming that day. I wanna bring you over to a section where I did this a couple weeks ago, maybe even a month ago, with some tomatoes in a section where Tuck actually dug and killed off some of the tomatoes. So we just replaced them with suckers. Let me bring you over there now. This raised bed right here is probably one of my favorite raised beds. I love how productive it is and the diversity in here. And that it's like, there's just so much green growth. But this was one of the sections where I just took those tomatoes and stuck them into the ground. Here's one right here. You'll notice I just pushed this into the ground. Look, it looks like a small tomato. This thing rooted. Right next to me over here was a tomato that I stuck into the ground. That one rooted. And next to that, there's another one. And then I've even got another one back here. So I did it with like five or six. I'll choose the biggest and healthiest one. So this tomato that I rooted a couple weeks ago, it's already got new flowers on it. So we're not just gonna cry about it and whine that something bad happened. We're gonna try to do what we can to still push that harvest, to still make sure we get something out of it. If only just a lesson, that's at least something. Sometimes it seems like that it never rains, it pours. So when one or two things go wrong, it seems like a lot of stuff goes wrong at once. But that's okay because I like to get it all out of the way at one time. I wanna bring you over to the hazelnuts now, which as you saw in the beginning of the year, those things were just loaded with hazelnuts, the most I've ever seen. The only problem now is all the hazelnuts, well, most of them are on the ground now. And I thought it was the chipmunks that were doing it. I was blaming it on a lot of the critters. And I know that the chipmunks got to some of them because all these shells are cracked and open, but that's not actually the issue. Because I'll notice when I break into some of these hazelnuts, there are blanks on the inside, which is unfortunate. I did some research and it said that basically there's no it almost seemed like there was no definite reason why the hazelnuts are blank sometimes. There were some varieties that I read in the past where they were producing well and then all of a sudden they just started producing like eight or 10% blanks. So it's not something that will happen every single year, I don't think. They listed a lot of the issues as often environmental issues or not enough watering, not enough fertilizer, not enough light. So I think it's probably not enough water and not enough fertilizer. 
I put this tree in years ago and I haven't really taken that much care of it. So this year I'm gonna put some fertilizer at the base of it. So maybe some form of manure if I can get a good amount of chicken manure so that I can get a good harvest from it. The issue isn't pollination because I have all these hazelnuts. So I know it's not pollination. This year though, I can already see some of the catkins forming for next year. So that's encouraging. And on the other hazelnut tree, this one has an insane amount of catkins because they pollinate one another. Hazelnuts can't pollinate themselves even though they both have male and female. They have both two of them, male and female, but they don't pollinate. You need a different variety. So these will pollinate each other. We're getting good pollination. It's just that variety for some reason dropped the nuts. This variety isn't dropping them, which is cool. I've got a bunch of nuts on this one, so I'm not sure exactly the issue because if it was solely environmental, then I would think both plants would have uh, dropped the nuts. So it just be, may be that that variety right there is a little more finicky. Maybe it needs more water, maybe it needs more uh, fertilizer, or maybe what it came down to, and it might be, I'm just too greedy. I tried to get too many hazelnuts without giving enough to it. There's my boy Tuck digging his holes, cooling himself off. That's a good spot for a hole though, boy. That's a good spot, boy. Right underneath the hazelnuts and next to the flowers, next to the shiso. This guy knows how to pick them, right, boy? Right, boy? Thanks for being out here with us, boy. So this guy's out here if it's hot or he doesn't care. A real trooper. I want to show you some of the grapes now because those look fantastic. As I kick uh, some cilantro, you're like, what the heck is this weed doing in here? This isn't a weed. This is cilantro. I let this baby go to seed. All these cilantro have gone to seed. Now I'll just grab my hands like this, maybe just throw them throughout the garden. Some will come up and that's just, that's self-replicating, self-seeding. If I don't have to do it, it makes it a lot easier. The grapes in here still look fantastic, even through the storm. Some of them fell in the other area, but overall, they look great. So I'm really just being patient. I'm out here every day, just watching them, waiting for them to ripen, <laughs> getting so excited. But let me bring you to the Concords over here too. Some of the Concord grapes fell with the wind, but not enough to make a difference. You'll notice I had to, I had to like pull these apart to come through. The garden is just, it's like enclosing in on itself. That's why you need someone, the gardener, the steward to come through and trim some of the vines, prune some of the trees to make sure you get that production. So these ones are still doing well. Like I mentioned, the Concords just waiting for the coloration. And some of them fell on the ground. A little bit unfortunate, but that's, that's gonna happen. And some of the peaches fell also, which looked pretty good. I wanna bring you to this peach tree though, where some of them are getting very close. We'll see if we have any ripe ones. This one looks like it's about ripe. So we'll try this guy. It doesn't look like it's bit really too bad either. So we'll try this one looks pretty good or there's another big one over there. Let's try that peach. Let me see. Nice one here. Oh yeah. That's another day or two. I'm gonna wait on that one because that's a really nice one. I bet I have some others over here. This, we lost a lot of the peaches from the, from the wind too. So it's the combination of the plum curculio and the wind. It gets a little tough. Um, if you don't know what the plum curculio is, it makes you do some research on it because you wanna make sure you stay ahead of it. If you're like me and you didn't know about it when you first started gardening, then you're behind. It's in here and you're trying to eradicate it as opposed to starting out and trying to create an environment that it doesn't come in. So you're preventing it instead of eradication. It's way easier like that. Let's try this plum, uh, this peach though. And you can see though, there's a little rotting right there so it's not perfect and this all fungus here this is due to not having enough light due to meat not pruning it enough still too hard not ripe yet another week or so some of the ones look really good in there though we'll be eating them cannot wait that's today's video growers thanks for watching i hope you enjoyed it i hope you got something out of it if you felt discouraged and uh let down that the storm knocked out your plants or they just it crushed your garden a little bit i encourage you to flip that transmute that turn that anger and frustration into fascination and encouragement to go ahead let that motivate you it doesn't have to bring you down so that's something that can really make a big difference for me the hazelnuts you know i'm not going to get a lot of fruit this year and it and it, it's unfortunate because I thought I was going to have so much with all the, uh, the shells. I mean, it was just like, it, it is tough seeing all the shells and then no fruit inside of it. That can be a little hard and a little demoralizing too, but I'm not going to quit because I know someone uh, 
you know, a huge motivator for me and someone who's a big influencer on my life, Joel Salatin. And he said, when something's worth doing, it's not worth, uh, you know, getting it right the first time. Instead, if something's worth doing, it's worth doing it until you get it right. So growing fruit trees and getting hazelnuts, I don't care how many times I get it wrong, as long as I'm improving and in the future I will get it right, I'm always gonna work towards that goal. If you guys enjoyed the video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, share with your friends. Don't forget to check out the merch down low. And remember, whenever you're shopping on Amazon, start your shopping with our Amazon affiliate link. It doesn't cost you anything, it helps us out a lot. And me and Tuck wanted to say thank you to everyone who is using it. It really, it does make a difference. I can't show you directly, but it helps and we appreciate your continued support. So if you guys enjoyed the video, hit the like button. We'll catch you again real soon. Tuck and James, we 